Chaosoft Dynamic Groups automatically and dynamically keeps any group up to date and accurate. The idea behind Dynamic Groups is that you can choose any type of group in Active Directory or any type of group in Azure Active Directory or Office 365, apply a set of rules to those groups, and then have the rules determine who is included or uh, excluded uh, from the group. The nice part is these groups can then be periodically or these rules can periodically be refreshed. And so as the data changes in either Active Directory or in Office 365, the group membership uh, will realign to whatever the new data sets are. That way you don't have to spend hours, days, weeks, months, or years updating groups manually. Uh, to create a dynamic group, you have a couple of options. If you're in uh, a newer version of Chaosoft Administrator, uh, on the Automation tab on the home page, you can click New Dynamic Group, or you can click New at the top left corner and choose Dynamic Group. The first thing you'll have to do is choose what type of group you want to um, uh, update and then actually select the group. At the top left corner, I can choose Active Directory or any group that appears through Azure Active Directory. In this case, we label it Office 365 to make it a little bit easier to keep those two separate. In my case, it's Active Directory, and I'm looking at any AD group. If I want to search and filter a little bit more narrowly, I can look just at security groups or distribution groups. By the way, this works with uh, AD security groups, DL type groups, or exchange on-premise uh, distribution groups, and any of the group types, including the Office 365 unified groups, which are new in Office 365. So you can pretty much do this with any group. Uh, first thing is to figure out which group you want to uh, make dynamic. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just, I happen to know there's a group out there called Finance uh, New York, and I want to include anybody who's in the New York office into that group with some special caveats. So at the top, I'm going to put begins uh, name begins with, I'll go ahead and expand, and you'll see in the under advanced options, we limit to about 300 uh, groups. We realize that this is used in a lot of enterprises where there are you know, as many groups as there are users, so we limit this to, uh, uh, to make it a little bit faster. So I'm going to go ahead and click search, and I'm going to find my group, Finance New York. Pretty easy. And I'll go ahead and click OK. So the dynamic group is set up, and now I just have to add rules, which will dictate the membership. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come, uh, come over to the right. I'm going to click Add Membership Rule. And then I'm going to add another membership rule here. So I have two different membership rules I'm going to populate. The first one will be all New York employees uh, that are either in accounting department or in the finance department. and they have to be in New York. And the second one is I'm gonna add somebody who's not in New York, maybe the finance manager, or sorry, manager of finance. Could be like the VP or whatever. The first one I'm gonna use include by query. It's gonna go out and find all the people I'm interested in. You'll also see if I wanted to prevent people from being in the group, I could use exclude. And then to put people in the group that don't fit the rules listed here, or the queries, I can actually add them here. So the second one, I'm actually going to include objects by name. And you'll see I have a little add button down here. I'm just going to go out here. This time I'm looking for a user. Could be a group also. I'm just going to add the VP of Finance, who's not in New York, Jimmy Buffett. So you'll see I'm now included a particular user. If I wanted to exclude a particular user or group, I could do it that way as well. So here's the fun part. Here's where we build a query to determine um, who's going to be in this group and who won't be in the group. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Add button here under the Command section. And you'll see all of the predefined queries uh, that come with the product are listed. So I can add computers because it's an on-premise Active Directory group, and that's legal. Contacts, groups, other distribution groups, security groups, etc. One I'm interested in is users. But I also want to point out that we can do employees uh, under a particular manager. And this also gives me the ability, for example, to do multiple levels. So I could say, you know, the VP plus the two levels below them as defined by the manager subordinate attribute set in Active Directory. 
there's lots of other ones, so I want to create a list of everybody whose passwords already expired and put them in a group. I could do that sort of thing. If I come down here, you'll see that also anybody whose password's not required. So these are all the standard queries we provide. And once I select 80 users in this case, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is apply uh, a limitation on where I'm going to look in my domains. So I'm going to come across to the right here, and I happen to know that all of my users are somewhere under corp. So you have a bunch of stuff underneath there, but I'm just going to look at everybody under corp. That's okay. So that'll limit the search uh, scope. So I, I won't search every place. I'll just search that one, that one OU. And then on the next line, I have to create a filter um, that will allow me to get the people who are in New York uh, that have either um, a department name of finance or a department name of accounting. So in this case, I'm going to add three conditions. And the first one's going to be the office. I could use city very, very much the same. I just happen to know it's populated in office in my directory. So I want to make sure they're in New York. Spelling counts here. And I want to make sure that their department, as we said earlier, is either accounting or finance. Now, uh, I have to be a little careful here because I have th two ands, and they can't have... Uh, the Office of New York uh, and a Title Accounting and, a or, sorry, Department of Accounting and a Department of Finance because they can't have two values uh, in the department field. So I really need to make this or. Now it causes a different problem, or I, I reveal a different problem. Uh, it'll be um, Office equals New York and Department equals Accounting or they just have finance, so they could be Columbus Finance and meet this rule. So that doesn't work either. This is where we use a little bit of the advanced capability here to manage grouping. So we're going to create more of an order of operations. So what I do is I simply group the two that I want to be evaluated together. Once I group them, now I have the correct query. So anybody in the New York office, the department is accounting or the department is finance. So it has to be New York, and it can be either accounting or finance. So I'll go ahead and click OK. This provides uh, everything I need. I've limited my scope. I now have uh, uh, built the correct query automatically using the query builder. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to save my changes so I don't lose any of my work here and just point out that I have the rule completed. And if I want to see who's returned by that include query, that first one, I can just click preview and it'll show me all the people who are in New York, either in finance department or the accounting department. That's totally cool. Uh, but who will be missing here is actually Jimmy Buffett. Uh, and the reason being is because there is no preview for this particular rule. You'll see that I already see the name, so there's no, no reason to actually have a preview. But if I wanted to see the calculated group membership, I can use the preview membership at the bottom. And somewhere in here, I don't know where it is, <laughs> in the J's here, we're going to find uh, Jimmy Buffett because um, he's now included as part of this. So there's Jimmy Buffett. And you'll notice he's not in New York. Not a finance user, he's just sort of off on his own in a different directory. So now I know that this group is ready to go. A uh, couple of additional things. Um, when I'm ready to actually populate the group, I just simply run the rule. So I'll go ahead and run the rule once manually. It's done already. I get a little execution history down here to tell me. It added 370, or 397 people to the group. Let's actually go find that group, and we'll take a quick peek here. So I'm going to go to Groups. And I'm looking for Finance New York. There it is. And you'll see that we've added a little note here that it's controlled by Chaosoft Dynamic Groups. And if I come in here and look at the members, I'll see there are my 300 and some X people. So now, if I know that I'm looking for a particular set of users, let's say maliciously somebody comes in here and everybody, including Jimmy Buffett right there, anybody whose uh, name begins with J is removed. So you'll see I remove those folks, I'll apply it, you'll see there are no, no J's in there at this point. I'll go ahead and click OK. Just to prove there's nothing under my sleeve, up my sleeve here, if I look at the J's again, nobody's in there. So the idea is that when the group becomes inaccurate, the rules will still apply. And so the next time that this rule is run, it will do an incremental update on the group and put back the people who were added incorrectly. In this case, you'll see 47 people were put back. If I select that, it'll actually tell me how long it took uh, to perform the task and how many minutes it would have taken me to do that manually. 
So now I have a record of what happened. I can come back to that group one more time. I'll look at New York Finance, and you can imagine the opposite is true as well. If somebody's removed and they should be in the group, we put them in. If somebody gets added to the group, like we'll choose all these folks up here that start with A. He was already in the group. Okay, but you see I have Aaron Bennett and a bunch of other people in here and a bunch of groups that are in there that shouldn't be in there. Go ahead and do that. Again, anytime the group runs, uh, it'll correct that situation by either adding or removing people. Now, if I want this to happen automatically, I can create a run book and add several of these dynamic groups into the run book, run the run book on a schedule, and whatever uh, dynamic groups uh, rule sets are in the run book, it'll run uh, each one of those dynamic groups and update the groups. Or if I just want this one to run, I can enforce it and put it on a specific schedule, maybe run it once a day or once a couple of day, every other day. And then finally, if I need to make sure that I have good audit history and show um, uh, what the rules were when the actual uh, dynamic group was executed, there's an option here to add change details to both change history, which is the web-based um, uh, change uh, auditing that we do if you're doing uh, looking at manual group updates or looking at users and wondering how they got in the group, or in execution history, which is what I showed you over here on the right or can be accessed through the configuration menu. So I'll go ahead and save that. I'll go ahead and run the rule one more time just to show that if there are no changes to the group membership, it doesn't actually rewrite the membership at all. So it's extremely efficient. Uh, I would simply you now schedule this and set it and forget it. You can get more details on this uh, by going to chaosoft.com uh, forward slash download and giving the product a try yourself.